Venga, ven. Well, hello, welcome to the video. This one's about the first punk player. Well, maybe not. I fell in love with this guy way back in, I don't know, 1990. He'd been dead for a long time by then, but I didn't know that. I was basically sent a load of CDs by Alligator Records, Bruce Iglia, and um, I played them. And this one stood out like a thousand miles. And it was a guy called Hound Dog Taylor. Goodbye, If you know anything about YouTube, you know I can't play huge chunks from his music. His albums are generally available. You can catch them on things like Apple Music, Prime Music and all that stuff. First album was called Hound Dog Taylor and the House Rockers, which was the name of his band. And it was a very strange band because um, it was basically two guitars and drums. And they played in a very strange style that was all of their own. The House Rockers were Brewer Phillips on second guitar and the one and only Ted Harvey on drums. You, you never see this anywhere in the Illinois. You never see nowhere in Boston or Massachusetts, nowhere you ever anywhere you go to you never see two guitars and one drum. If you see one guitar you see a bass man. We haven't got now. We're doing this on our own. So what I'm gonna do for you, if you think we're not kicking for you, I'm gonna turn you over to Brewer you gonna take it, baby? I'm with you! If you stick around to the end of this video, I will tell you the very surprising thing about Hound Dog Taylor that made him totally unique. I mean, generally, from any other person I've ever heard of, so stick till the end, and I promise you, I'll surprise you. He was born Theodore Roosevelt, named after the president in 1915 in Mississippi. He basically learned to play the piano first, and then the guitar when he was about 20. All his life, even though you wouldn't think so, looking at him, he's a bit of a um, ladies' man, shall we say, and he got his name Hound Dog for chasing the ladies. And one of the things he suspected of having sex with a white woman, and he had to flee from Mississippi, which in those days, this is 1942, it was segregation, even though it was during the Second World War. And he went to live in Chicago. He went full-time in 1957, and his style of playing was like Elmore Leonard-style slide. <laughs> about Town Dog Taylor is he had his own style. Just to say, I'll just, there's loads more to come, so don't go away now. I'm just gonna say that if you like what I'm doing, please go to my Patreon page, Patreon, whatever, and I've got loads of videos on there. You can watch ad-free and you can watch them in HD. There's some videos which are special, which are only on Patreon. There's also articles I've written on things like why did Wilbur Johnson leave Dr. Feelgood? He once told me. Even two pound a month helps, it's great, whatever. Or like this video, subscribe, follow me, etc. Whatever you do, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. And now back to Hound Dog Taylor. I'm talking about 1990, just a bit after me hearing about Hound Dog Taylor. I was starting a publishing company, and the first thing I was gonna do was a book of um, people involved in the rock and roll industry, writing about anything they wanted to write about. Uh, and I got lots of people, and I wrote to Bruce, and he sent me a fantastic article about Hound Dog Taylor. So anyway, what happened was, Bruce was working for another record label in Chicago, and he wasn't in the 
A&R or whatever, he's, I think he was mailing out mail order stuff, and he saw Hound Up Taylor play, because he used to play all over Chicago. No big deal, it wasn't in big places, it was always lounges and things like that, so it's all very off the cuff, and he used to get drunk, and Hound Up Taylor played cheap Japanese, played cheap jacket, Japanese, play cheap Japanese guitars, the cheapest you could get for a few dollars in thrift shops, as they call them, over there. And so he used to play that, very cheap sounding, but he made it sound great. Let's have a bit more, shall we? Just a bit more now. So back to the story. This is 1971. Bruce couldn't get Del Mark to sign them, so he basically signed them himself because he was left two and a half thousand dollars by a relative who died, and he used that to form Alligator Records, which went on to become probably the, one of the biggest and best blues labels in the world, certainly in Chicago. And he also became Hound Dog Taylor's manager. And under his guidance, Hound Dog Taylor went to Australia and spread a little further than his Chicago roots. Unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to do it. Because in 1975, he was a heavy smoker and he died of lung cancer. Very sad. And he never really got his full worth, I don't think. The first album was called Hound Dog Taylor and the House Rockers. So that's the name of the band. And it was recorded in two days. And it was all first and second takes and that sort of thing. And it is fantastic. It's just basically jams. It's so exciting. You can hear them making mistakes occasionally. But who cares? It's just really good and that was followed by another album along the same lines and then bruce since hound up taylor died he has put a few things out from the vaults but to me they're not quite they don't have the spark of the urgency because i think that when hound up taylor got signed to alligator records in the band were really excited and that shows in their music and just to say what i was what i promised you was that i would tell you something about hound up taylor that is unique and this is it. This is quite shocking, so stick around for this. He had what's known as polydactylism. I think that's how you pronounce it, which basically meant he had an extra finger on each hand. He had six fingers on each hand. It was a little small stumpy thing. And one night he got really drunk, apparently, and he cut one of them, I think, on his right hand with a razor blade. And it bled a lot, and it wasn't very nice, apparently. And he left the other one well alone. But that's what he was, he had six fingers on each hand. Hmm, giving a bit of an advantage, or not the case may be. Well, thanks for watching. As I say, head along to my Patreon page. There's a link in the description. Like this video if you liked, if you didn't then goodbye. And um, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This is slightly different to what I normally do, but I normally do things that I feel passionate about. But I definitely feel passionate about Hound Dog Taylor and the House Rockers. Goodbye.